I hope it's clear by now that today we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And it's interesting to look at Palm Sunday because it's one of the handful of events that are described in all four Gospels. Basically, the, the major events of Holy Week occur in the four Gospels, but each in a, a fairly different way. But Palm Sunday has this core meaning within the Christian tradition and within each Gospel of communicating who Jesus was as he was on earth and then later in his life resurrected form that we experience from Easter onward. Now, this year, the gospel reading we just heard, not the first one we had in the parish hall, but the one we just heard was from the gospel of Luke. And Luke has all sorts of different things he wants us to notice particularly. Now, one of the things that we have to be aware of is what was going on on this day in Jerusalem in the year roughly 33, probably 33 AD, the year that Jesus died. We are, if we are in Jerusalem, getting ready to celebrate the Passover holiday, the major holiday in the Jewish worship calendar. And so people are making pilgrimages, are traveling to Jerusalem from all over the Roman Empire. It is the day to go back to Jerusalem to be able to worship at the temple in Jerusalem a magnificent structure. By some historic accounts, it was the largest temple of any tradition, pagan or otherwise, within the Roman Empire. People came from miles around who weren't even Jewish just to see this temple. So it would be filling up with people coming from all over the known world to celebrate, to worship God. Now, <clears throat> for the Romans who were the occupiers of Jerusalem and Israel. They were the conquerors of that land. This meant trouble because you'd have all these tourists coming into town, many of whom had crazy ideas about how the Romans shouldn't go around crucifying people, for instance. And they would use that occasion of having these big crowds to share their ideas about what justice looked like, what a good government looked like, what fair taxation looked like. Sound familiar? It might to our own American history. So these proto-rebels would be talking about this in the midst of these crowds of thousands that could fit into the temple and in the cafes and the lodges and the campgrounds around Jerusalem. And this always worried the Romans because there was a history of successful rebellion coming from Jerusalem. They wanted to make sure that wouldn't happen again. So on this day, on this day, the Romans would send reinforcements. On this day, every year, leading into the Passover holiday, there would be a massive show of military force on the west side of Jerusalem. The Roman legion that was normally stationed on the coast, on the Mediterranean Sea, would come the roughly 60 miles to Jerusalem. They would come in a show of massive force. Think of all of the special effects you've ever seen in a movie about Roman times. And this is what they would be trying to show themselves back in that day. Horses, chariots, armor, banners, drums, trumpets. It'd be noisy, it'd be spectacular, there'd be sights to behold. And leading this procession would be Pontius Pilate on the biggest, most spectacular, <laughs> most angry looking horse they could find. This was Pontius Pilate leading in is hundreds of troops into Jerusalem to make sure no trouble would start. Now, Luke was well aware of this as he wrote this gospel. And he presumed we would be as well as we read this gospel. So we go to the other side of the city, to the Mount of Olives on the east side. And here comes another procession, another parade, 
No horses, no military might, no shiny medals, no drums, no trumpets. It's Jesus. Not on the biggest, angriest horse anyone could find, but on a colt. Colt. In the Gospel of John, it's described as a donkey even. It's the opposite of what Pontius Pilate was riding. It didn't even have a saddle. People had to put some coats on it so that Jesus could ride somewhat comfortably on it. It was a visual satire of what Pontius Pilate was doing on the other side of the city. This colt was not covered with ribbons and brass and leather. It was covered with some peasants' coats, and Jesus dressed similarly, not in grand regalia of a Roman governor, but instead as a humble peasant as he started to ride down the hill of the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem. Following Jesus was not a massive army, no swords, no chariots, no other weaponry and signs of might, but instead people who were literally taking their coats off and laying it on the road for Jesus to have a sort of red carpet for his colt to walk on. So they were looking even more bedraggled as the dust rose and they became a little bit dirty and dusty and probably a little bit sweaty as well, and they walked into the city of Jerusalem. Now, the Roman legions, they had their drum corps, they had various other instruments probably, they had their, all their sound effects of the hundreds of horses, hooves clopping on the stone pavements from Jesus' crowd, the footsteps would be fairly muffled by the cloaks on the road. And instead of trumpets or drums, there is the voices of the people saying, peace on earth, peace in heaven. And blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. We have the advantage today of having two gospel readings. So you may have noticed in the first reading, there's no mention of a king here. Luke wanted to make a point Luke wanted to make sure we saw that the procession of Jesus was in opposition, was in direct contrast to the show of force the Romans were putting on on the opposite end of town. So Luke has the crowd saying, this is a king. Luke has the crowd committing treason as they say their hosannas. Now, one of the things also Luke would expect we know is that the Roman emperor, Caesar, Caesar Augustus specifically, had given himself the title of son of God. And he expected people to call him Lord. And there were various other titles that Christians t took to apply to Jesus as Jesus had been doing for himself as he spoke in the Gospels, of using the terminology of the Roman Empire to describe Jesus, to show who was the true emperor, who was the true leader of the people. And throughout the Gospel of Luke, Jesus again and again talks about the kingdom of God as the people listening are living in the kingdom of the Romans. That there is this direct opposition between Jesus' message and what people were hearing every day of their lives as they lived under the oppressive rule of the Romans. There was this contrast back and forth. But one of the most moving parts, even today for me anyway, is the people of Jesus' procession singing about the peace in heaven. Because Luke very carefully echoes the words of the angels in the Christmas story that Luke gave us at the beginning of his gospel, where the angels come and proclaim the birth of Jesus by the angels saying to the shepherds, peace on earth, and more than that. And here the people are echoing back, peace on heaven. It's supposed to kind of give us chills, and it doesn't take long to read this entire gospel in one sitting. So as we might have started the afternoon hearing about peace on earth, now as we're coming to 
the beginning of evening, we'd be reading Peace in Heaven. Heaven and earth are singing to each other. The angels are sing singing peace on earth. The people around Jesus are singing peace on heaven. It's like they're passing the peace that we do halfway through each of our Eucharists. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Here it's angels and the followers of Jesus having this chorus back and forth. That is what Jesus is wanting us to hear even today. That the chorus of the kingdom of God is being sung in heaven and on earth. The peace to all, peace to heaven, peace to earth. Because part of what the Gospel of Luke has Jesus talking about again and again is how the kingdom of God is right here among us. Whenever the presence of God is with us, we are in the kingdom of heaven. Whether, wherever we are, if we're driving in traffic or in church or laying down to go to sleep at night, we are in the kingdom of heaven. And so to have this chorus singing back and forth, peace to you, peace to you, is what Luke wants to make sure we Christians today are experiencing in our lives. That that's, that that's our expectation of what the Christian life is like. And of course, Luke is saying this in the midst of knowing how difficult life is. Because in Luke, we have the warning of the Pharisee of Jesus, tell your people to tone it down. This is the second time that a Pharisee warns Jesus that if he doesn't tone down his crowds, Herod and Pilate are going to kill him. The Pharisees in the Gospel of Luke are not the bad guys. They're, they kind of want to be followers of Jesus, but can't quite bring themselves to do it. And so we have this warning at the end of the Palm Sunday story, the end of the Palm Sunday Gospel reading from Luke, to remind us that even as peace is being proclaimed between heaven and earth, Luke is not being a Pollyanna about what this means for Jesus' life or for our lives. That doesn't make our lives perfect. It doesn't make our lives easy. It doesn't make our lives event-free in a bad way. But even as we face, as Jesus is about to, the most difficult week of his life, we can still walk with that peace in our hearts. In some ways, this is part of Jesus' spiritual preparation for being able to undergo the difficulties, the trials, the suffering, and the death that he's about to experience. And so in our lives, today, we are invited by Luke to similarly ourselves that heavenly chorus and that earthly chorus of peace to all, peace everywhere, peace in our hearts. Because even when we are beginning to face a Holy Week type of experience, a difficult experience, or are walking through one, God still wants us to have an awareness that we are in God's kingdom and that peace is with us. Heavenly peace and even earthly peace is available to us, can be in our hearts if we simply join in the procession. If we join in the Palm Sunday procession and echo back to heaven, peace to all, peace to all. Because God loves us. God loves the whole world. And so that chorus can echo around heaven and earth. Peace to all. Peace to all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.